Hello Indigame fans, part 2 of the new Indie Game trailers for October are once again filled with a bunch of titles from Kickstarter, beginning with the pixel art action platformer Eagle Knight Paradox. This looks absolutely fantastic, combining fast-paced action and great visuals. This is a classic tale of the Empire's greatest heroes gone rogue, so it is up to our hero to fight against his former friends and to save the day. While there are some terms used on the campaign page that indicates that this developer does not use English natively, the action more than makes up for that and should turn out pretty well. They seem to have put in a lot of work prior to the campaign, with screenshots, GIFs, and even concept art, so it does look promising, so please support this if you can. Very excited to talk about Arc Lens, a roguelite RTS RPG which is throwing around a lot of terms, so here's the deal. This controls like a traditional RTS title, so villagers to control, structures to build and resources to harvest, but similar to Warcraft 3, does have a hero avatar which is persistent and can level up and such. It's classic build, explore and conquer kind of gameplay, but with survival elements as well since enemies do come to attack your village, and if it does get destroyed, you are able to pick up some villagers and the remnants of that town and start over on another procedurally generated island. I love the pixel art in this, which really does look awesome and a no-brainer pick for this video. My sorrow runs heartily deep. Night after night, nothing but darkness. No river of blood could possibly quench my thirst. Discord member Pepperado pointed out Romancovania to me, and I'm on the same page as them, being not quite sure how to feel about this Metroidvania title. This is a loving parody of Castlevania, touting itself as a thirsty Metroidvania, but with the design philosophy of naughty, not dirty. So it's not that kind of game. I can show you the world. I just don't want to. I'm looking for a connection that's deeper than just fanged artery. Breakfast in bed? Or existential. You said I still get to maim things. It does look quite classic in design, with a variety of romanceable characters where you play as Dracula as he was recruited by Death itself to star in a reality dating show. I don't know about this. You'll love it. <laughs> Drac used to be the ultimate playboy. He and Medusa were a hot item for a while. Before that great lung took her head. Good news is we found her head for the show. Still working on finding the body. I have an idea how you can put my head to good use. <sighs> Unfortunately, this seems to have taken some lessons from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night in terms of the visuals, which is still not my favourite look, but it's a cheeky take on the genre which I'm curious about. Play and stir up some trouble along the way. Wait, whips can be used in combat? <laughs> We finally have a proper look at the revamped visuals of the monster-taming Metroidvania Monster Sanctuary currently in early access, but this trailer does reveal its 1.0 release date, together with the confirmation that it's coming to consoles as well.
I've been enjoying this in early access myself and I'm waiting for the full release. This has everything that I love in games from Monster Collection, Pixel Art and the Metroidvania progression with a noted price increase on Steam after launch, so get in on this lower price while you can. A character action title with a sweet art style is Geno Kids, where you choose to play as one of four musicians who have to fight off an alien invasion. Love the look, which I think can be described as cel shaded, citing Kingdom Hearts and Devil May Cry as inspirations for the action. It's about building hype and motivation, something that I'm familiar with, including both a single player campaign as well as co op support. An adorable smaller farming title which just missed out on my previous video on farming games is Farmer Supreme, which incorporates Zelda-style action-adventure elements where the farming seems to be more of a secondary system. Explore the world and discover all the seeds to be planted, which grow into adorable squirming vegetables. This just seems very pleasant though there are different endings and a relationship system with NPCs, and as of recording, it's about 50% funded with half of its campaign left to go, so do support this if you like it. A nice surprise is that the next installment of the hit mobile swipe based adventure game is titled Reigns Beyond, where you play as an intergalactic indie rock band who has to navigate their way from planet to planet, playing gigs and earning fame and fortune. Just an animated trailer at the moment, but the store page does show its classic interface and it appears to be an Apple Arcade exclusive at least in the launch window. I love city builders, so I'm happy to share The Wandering Village, a title where you build a settlement on the back of a giant creature. It's a very interesting setting and not commonly seen in games, though there are a number of noted examples in other media, such as in the Detective Pikachu movie recently. Build a village, plant crops and harvest resources while working with and caring for the creature that is literally carrying you on its back. As this creature moves, the environments and biomes will change, so it's an interesting alternative to the seasonal changes in other games. This is also from Stray Fawn Studios, who made fun games such as Niche, a genetics survival game, and most recently, Nimbata's The Space Drone Constructor, 
so a great pedigree which has already led to this being fully funded. Publisher Digerati continues to impress with its catalogue of titles, with Peach Lift Pirates being of interest. Another farming sim, this time set on a tropical island where you wash up with amnesia, it has a pleasant pixel art style and all your expected elements. top of farming and planting crops of both regular and fantastical varieties, from mangoes to chuba berries, this has a variety of weird animals as well, which looks pretty impressive. There's a dungeon crawling action adventure element as well, including puzzles, a main story and three different skill trees to master, so the RPG elements added into this farming sim could make it something special. Ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, it is a festering abomination. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. Paths and roads bring soldiers and supplies. Let them arrive on Harried. For something cool and not so typical on this channel, Darkest Dungeon The Board Game is the physical manifestation of one of my favourite indie games of all time and looks like an impressive package that has already blown way, way beyond its initial goal. A moment of respite. A chance to steel oneself against the coming horrors. The base game comprises of 8 hero miniatures, 64 monster miniatures, a main board, room towels, a hamlet card, 400 plus cards and 200 plus tokens, so it's a hefty and substantial offering. If you're used to buying video games, this price may seem a little steep at $100 US for the base game and $50 more for the Crimson Court expansion with 36 more miniatures, but for that sheer quantity, I think it's a steal by board game standards. Death waits for the slightest lapse in concentration. In truth, I cannot tell how much time has passed. It's also a Kickstarter exclusive and will not go to retail, so there's some added pressure, but for just looking like a great deal from a great developer, it takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, Check out these awesome videos, and I will see you after the jump. The ravenous clutching shadow of the darkest dungeon.